Right. It's 6.30. call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda is public comment. If you have something you'd like to say, please come to the podium. State your name and address. You have three minutes. Address your comments to the board and not to the audience. Anybody interested? No. Okay. Item number three. No smoking policy for recreational fields public hearing. So I officially open the public hearing. If anybody would like to speak to the proposed um, policy that we put in place or would like to put in place, come to the podium. No. Anybody from the board would like to speak to it? Administrator? Well, I was just going to say that the proposed policy uh, entitled Tobacco Use on Town Owned Property, uh, the purpose of which is to prohibit the use of tobacco profit products on town owned recreational property, um, and in accordance with the policy, that would also be areas adjacent to the recreational field, so it would include parking areas and uh, the pavilion that would overwork. Any discussion among the board as to when you might want the effective date to be, assuming you're going to Are we going pass to put this? up, are we, I'm sorry, are we going to put up signs yes. uh, then throughout the, in a couple of places in the park and other other recreational mm -hmm. areas? How many, how many recreational areas do we have? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Stevens Field, the Town mm -hmm. Field, and yep. the Little Park. Mm -hmm. yep. So personally, I think it should be effective when we put up the signs. Exactly, so we have a target date. It could be July 1st, provided that Steve Bullock can get the signs that fast, but I think he already has them. He does. All right. July 1st? July 1st. Sure. That would give them enough time to install them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say July 1st, 2019. Yes. Okay. No. <laughs> Any comments? Okay. I move to adopt the tobacco use on town property policy as presented to be effective July 1st, 2019, and to instruct the highway department to post appropriate signs at the town's recreational fields. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item number four. Close the hearing. Oh, sorry, that's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I officially close the hearing. Thank you, John. Uh, item number four. Barb, watch out. Uh, Energy Committee rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to remind everybody here, the um, March a year ago, the town adopted a warrant article that allowed us to uh, pursue looking for sites for a solar array somewhere in the town, um, particularly for the public safety complex and the transfer station. And since the highway department is the other uh, building, the other buildings that are associated with New Hampshire Electric Co-op. Those are the ones that we're looking at, is trying to find a solar array site that will support energy production for those, not for those buildings, because it would be feeding back into the grid, and then we would get compensated for the energy that we produce. Uh, we've been working with Revision Energy, and I have John Dunster here for Revision to answer any questions you have. <coughs> that he might be a, I'm not a very technical person on this, so... He's my backup on that. Um, so what I wanted to do is take you through kind of what we've been doing the last month. Um, the first piece, first map that's here is what was sent out to you, but I'll explain it a little bit. Um, we initially looked, at, we're looking at 
initially, uh, all last year, we looked at sites that were on the roofs of the buildings. We looked at the public safety complex. We looked at the transfer station. Revision gave us uh, proposals for solar installation on both those roofs. And uh, it was decided that we would not be looking for a rooftop array uh, for safety reasons and for other reasons. And so we decided to look for a ground-mounted array. And so the fir obvious first place we would look, we decided to look at was at the transfer station, which had some open ground. And the first one to look at was at the old landfill site, which on this, this uh, picture is shown in red. And then there's a blue overlay, and that was where we thought we would probably put the array if we could. Uh, we raised that with revision. Revision went to their investors, and the investors said that that was not a possible site. And this is happening all over the state. Even though the state is supporting the idea of uh, landfill solar arrays, um, people are too worried about what, what's in those old landfills. So we've ruled that out, so you can mark that one through. The second, era, second one we are looking at is down here in orange, and it's at the entrance to the land uh, transfer station on the right. It's below the, the little garden and to the right in the property that is between the road into the transfer station and the sand hill on the, on the, in the highway department. Um, the, as you can see on this map, there's a town trail that goes through through that, right through that property. And across the street in yellow is uh, the, the boundaries of the school board, I mean not school board, the West River School District property, which continues on down to Mast Way. The um, area with the uh, uh, baseball field is, is highway department as well. So this particular uh, site is um, a site that is both Highway Department and Transfer Station property. If you, if you go to the next page, you'll see that we're looking at that. That shows up in the top right corner. And down in the bottom left corner are two other sites that we're looking at. And I'll show you those in detail in just a minute that are here, right here at the Public Safety Complex. So if you go to the third page, you'll see kind of a rough estimate of where a solar array at that leak, at that site in uh, uh, the transfer station would go. One of the things we ran into was uh, the fact that there's a leach field on that site, and the leach field for the transfer station. And so uh, Randy Stevens and Toby Van Anken went out using the old maps for it and poked around for a couple of hours with poles and whatever, and located the the leach field. So in the next page, you'll see how I've laid out. I took uh, John Dunster's solar array picture, and I laid it out on this map to show you where the leach field site would be in relation to that, uh, to the leach field itself in orange. And um, so you can see that if we put a, a solar array on that site, we would have to cut a number of trees on that site, and probably down to the all the way down to the road and all the way to the sand uh, the sand hill, and um, and and even that out. We've had uh, Don Quigley, the forester in town, take a look at that site. There are some big pines on the on the site. Um, there's there, there are a number of trees, but they're not terribly valuable trees in terms of if we logged it, they wouldn't necessarily produce produce much income back from the logging for that. Um, but it is it would be reasonable to to consider logging that property and produce and it would produce a, a large enough area for a solar array. So I think that's a, a good a good site. Still, it's a good possibility if uh, if we're willing to cut the trees there. We brought the uh, Energy Committee brought the Conservation Commission in to look at this site. Uh, they walked it because of the trail that goes straight right through it, and um, we discussed it. Um, my understanding from them is that it would be 
it would not be a great loss if that site was was cleared because um, they they're looking for more open space in the town anyway from uh, the, the town is pretty heavily forested so it would be okay to have that area forested but we still need to have leave enough room so that the trail that goes by there could continue to go through because that's the connector between uh, that's the entrance into the town of forest and back of the land um, the land fill and the transfer <coughs> station um, okay so that's the Leachfield site. Then we started looking around for sites that would not interfere with town <coughs> trails. And we found the, looked at the site just west of this building, right on the other side of the parking lot, and just just beyond the, the uh, rain, the swale over there that collects the water from the parking lot. And this site is um, all wooded. It, the topography is such that it's almost divided in half. Um, half of it is about is on is ledge and is about 10 or 15 feet higher than the the area that's closest to the to the public safety complex. Um, I, when I brought Don Quigley over to look at that, he looked at the site and said there's considerable red oak on that site that could be logged and probably be profitable in the sense of. It, uh, red oak is highly is in, in high demand, so we might be able to offset uh, some, maybe all of the cost of logging by log clear cutting that site. Um, if you look at the next page, the next page shows John Dunster's uh, revisions layout of how the solar array would go on that site. But as he and I were talking just a little while ago, it would they would adjust it however they needed to, to fit the site, fit the topography of the site. It might be that uh, the small, some of those mo modules would go, um, go further, a little bit closer down to the George Bennett Road. Uh, it might be split up in some ways, but they, they would have to get up on the ground to really look and see how that would be laid out. Um, anyway, I think that's a, that's, that's a good site. Um, it's just a, a matter of how, how expensive it will be to cut and whether it's uh, an, an issue at all for anyone. We talked to Karen Rossi. She doesn't seem to think there's any problem with that site in terms of other obligations for the site. So um, that's where that site is. We get, we've get gotten a lot of questions about Stevens Field as a possible option. Because it is flat, it's large enough, and it it's, has no trees on it. So we did ask revision to sort of give a layout of what the solar panels would look like on that site. So you can see a picture of, of what it might look like there. Um, in some ways, that's an ideal site. But of course, the Stevens Field is currently being used for recreation. And the town would have to make a decision about whether it would want to give up that practice field or not. If they use, if they wanted to go in that direction, um, so that's pretty much where we're at right now. Um, the idea behind this is to try to produce enough energy from whatever array we get to cover our costs and maybe even then some um, from for all three of the New Hampshire Electric Co-op buildings and, and meters that we have. Um, I was going to ask John if you would speak to how much that would produce and maybe the cost, how much we might get from that, if you want, if you can. Sure. So at John Dunster Revision Energy. Um, looking at the buildings that were described and the usage for those buildings, there's about 160,000 kilowatt hours a year. It's ranged from 142, it's more up around 160 now. The net metering um, policy now in the state <clears throat> makes it so that if we could develop a project of 100 kW AC, that it would be very close to that, somewhere between 147 and one maybe 70 kilo, 1,000 kilowatt hours a year. So it'd be very close. The beauty of that is it allows us the net meter that, that what is ever not used behind the building. So we really want to find a three-phase location 
essentially a higher energy location like the transfer station or this building because that saves on the installation size. And then we need to identify an, about an acre of land that would be have good exposure to the sun. And looking at it real quickly, and basically if we, if we didn't include, and the reason we don't want to include the clearing into our side of the project is because that is known as, uh, it's not qualified for the 30% tax credit. It's unqualified expenses in the project, so it would fall on the investor and therefore the rate would go up. Basically, we looked at a couple of the sites, we looked at projects that we've been doing around the state, and we've determined if we can find a decent site near three phase, we could come up with something that would be uh, in a net metering situation where about 30% was net metered, this town would save somewhere between $1,500 and $3,000 depending on exactly how much was net metered. So that would be the savings to the town. Behind the meter is more, more valuable because we're actually offsetting not the full charges and what we send back to the grid is discounted at, uh, and sold to the co-op at a lesser rate. So to give you some scope of that, you're paying about 16 cents when you're buying it from them, and then what you're selling back, you're selling back at around 12 cents. Mm -hmm. We looked at the PPA rate was gonna be right in that 12 cents area, so you're not losing anything from the standpoint of what you're selling back, but you're, you're behind the meter with savings would, as I said, be somewhere between 1500 and $3,000. Any questions? Uh, for all the ones that you mentioned here, um, I understand that you're trying to get so many kilowatt hours and so forth. Uh, is there any site that's expandable beyond what you? Um, well, um, I'm looking down the road. I know we're burning now, but what if? And actually, we're we're actually uh, using less ex electricity than we were a year ago mm -hmm. uh, yes. since we added these LEDs in both big buildings. Um, it's actually dropped down. So we're saving money right now. Hopefully we can do more. Um, can you answer that, John? Yeah, so the expandability of the solar, I mean, these are going to be tight and they're going to be just kind of shoehorned into there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're obviously going to have to be clearing or going to be grading. So they really would lend themselves to being thinking about expandability with the limitations that we're dealing with. Um, you know, if you were looking at some place adjacent to or some place where you might have three to five acres, you might want to drop 100 kW today, and then depending on what happened in the town over time, you could certainly, if you're next to three phase, drop another 100 kW at some point. But right now, I don't think we have the yep. flexibility to do that. Right. Over time, you could do a second site, could you not? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, so that any incentives or legit or anything like that, as long as it's behind a different meter than what we did before, you could add it and get your, your incentive money. So expandability on one site might be difficult, adding another site wouldn't be at all. Yeah. Ms. Rossi? Yes. So first, I want to apologize for springing this on you last minute. I've had oh, some personal okay. things, so I've been out of the office a lot lately. Um, on the public safety complex lot, um, it's actually tighter than you thought because you have the highway right away you have to take into consideration. Okay. You have the old Bennett Road right away, which goes here and then through here, mm -hmm. and the Pascales driveway right away. So you actually, not even, you're just under an acre now, and you're gonna lose this right away, this right away, and this right away. So, let me show you this. Now, I haven't seen this, so maybe you've already taken that into consideration. Right. This is, this is what, what John laid out, so, and you were saying that it could, it could be yeah, you're going to have to shrink this because this right away goes, It's we'll have to do some research to figure out exactly what this right away is. So it goes here, and then it goes here to here, and then the Pascal's driveway is someplace in here too. It's, it goes straight up that way, I think. Okay, so we're all, we've all cleared. So yeah. you might have to configure this some more to make it all work. Yeah, so the, so the answer is I'm sitting at a computer or, or designers okay. and we're putting this on a piece of property, right? Yeah. When we get out here, so if you could imagine if we just moved it down there, we would create, because I walked that just recently, you know, yep. literally. So yeah. the beauty of this, it's not set in that stone. We could okay. add a little bit to this row and take a little bit from those rows. Okay, but yeah, I just want to bring the right-of-ways all into, yeah. because yep. they're, even though it's not used, it's still there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Great, Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? So are you proposing right now to build one solar array? <coughs> yes. 
Excuse me, I have one more thing. Yep. There's a drainage easement for this building in this area well, this, here too. This whole area we wouldn't we wouldn't touch. Okay. Because it's a it's an easement, so we'd have to figure out what that is too. Does the easement go beyond this drainage? We'll have to look at we'll have to look into that, but that's another thing to Okay. Okay, we'll look at okay. that. Thanks, sorry. Okay. <coughs> yeah, so we're only talking about picking one side that would handle the hundred kilo kilo hundred kilowatt AC. Yeah. Do you like the hundred and twenty four or hundred and thirty kWd? Yeah. <coughs> a couple of questions, Wendy. If we're looking at the public safety conflict one we were just discussing, mm -hmm. uh, which way would they be angled? Do you know that at this point? Well, he's got them on on here showing that. I'm talking about the Oh uh, the degree? Yeah. So when we do a ground mount we typically want to be about thirty degrees. Would they be facing the road? I'm concerned about reflection. So People driving by that kind of yeah, thing. that's a great question, and we face that all the time. So the beauty, solar panels actually draw the sun in rather than okay. reflect the sun. Okay. Um, we when we go to to uh, projects at Pease Airport or any other airport, that's a question. We actually have to go to the FAA for a glare report, and solar panels usually don't have any problem with that. Okay, because um, from my point of view. I probably would lead more to the transfer station site and not have something so visible right here by the public safety complex because I do worry about um, the aspect of somebody driving by and throwing a brick. I hope they wouldn't do that kind of thing. But if it's more property that's behind the transfer station, there's less opportunity. It's just, so I, will, I hope the committee <coughs> looks at that as well, those issues, things that you know will go wrong go wrong kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, especially we just talked about reflectivity, so that's not a major issue, but uh, vandalism could be an issue. And well, it is a nice wooded zone by the public safety complex as well. It, it, it has an ambiance here to have that wooded zone. Wouldn't, wouldn't it normally be fenced off or not? So when this particular size, when you get into a project this size, you, you have the choice as the town whether you want to fence it or not. It's not done by electric code. Mm -hmm. Once you get over 300 kW, you have to fence it in. So you don't have to fence in it. If, you, if, you, if you've driven down 125 where Brentwood is and you see that, all that, that we drink, put that array in there, it's not fenced in, it's wide open, nobody's had, they haven't had any problems with it. Certainly a little bit more, a lot of tra more traffic there, so maybe that helps in terms of, but, so you could cho choose to fence it in if you wanted to. Would there be any advantage to having it more immediately adjacent to the building that uses the most power? Yes, absolutely. So it would be? better from that standpoint to have it next to this building. That's correct, yeah. Behind the meter, whatever the most mm -hmm. consumption behind the meter is the most valuable to the town. Mm -hmm. And I as I did get to say to Bill and Bill Hummel, my first exchange to him was that we have <coughs> tried to be a good neighbor to the Pascals over here over the years because it is a lot of light and a lot of noise. And we've been trying to be very good about the trees over there. So I just want you guys to keep that in mind that we have tried in the past to be a good neighbor. We've had some issues when this building was first built with noise and light and you can't see up in there. So that would be an issue if we did cut these trees for them. What about behind this building? Um, we looked at that and behind the building we've got, it's a fairly narrow area between the building and the power line, the electric co-op power line. And also some of that has already been designated for the memorial trees. There's a, there are a bunch of trees there that were planted, and and so there's sort of that area. But it's it's a fairly small area. The one area that I haven't mentioned that we we uh, talked about that we haven't done much with is, and I'll show you a picture of it, is actually behind the Stevens Field. Um, It's not, it's more like two thirds of an acre than, than an acre. So I don't know if it's big enough. Oh. Instead of being there, yes. and you wouldn't have too many trees there. Um, you can't tie it. Well, we haven't really investigated that enough, and John hasn't had a chance to look at the arrays for that. It would be large enough. So, I, go ahead. Any other questions? No. Is, excuse me, I'm sorry. Is this array about the same size as the one that we looked at in Elliot? Uh, Elliot's slightly larger. Slightly larger. Slightly larger, yeah. And I'm thinking theirs is on the landfill. Yes, when I, it when is. When I looked at it, it was on yeah. the landfill, yeah. yeah. Okay. And how they got it through, I don't know. But. 
Okay, thank you. Again, so let me just be clear. You can build on the landfills. What happens with the bent landfills is the, the way that you need to bend, you can't penetrate. Oh, sorry. Um, you can't, when you're building on a landfill, you can't penetrate the landfill if it's a capped landfill. So what you literally end up building is these big cinder blocks. And that process is very expensive. So what happens is you drive that cost up and then the PPA rate goes way up as well. And uh, one of the things that I've mentioned a few times is that part of the whole process right now is the, uh, obviously the tax credits to the uh, owner of the system. And this year the tax credits until the end of the year are 30%, next year they go down to 26% and then 22. So there's certainly an advantage to getting that built now because the PPA rate that we're talking about is based on a 30% tax credit. So that's why we've been, that's why we've been so anxious to try to get this moving. Don't, don't leave yep, it on. Oh, the question is for me. <laughs> question is for you. I'll stay here. So is there no <coughs> advantage for us to build, because the two biggest uses are the transfer station and this building. Is there no advantage to having a array for this building and an array for the transfer station? Because then that particular usage is behind the meter. I don't like giving away stuff. I'd rather have, you know, if we can uh, find arrays that fit this particular structure and also the transfer station, would that be a benefit to us? Is there something I'm missing in terms of when you split up two arrays instead of in a big one, two small ones? So if, if, you, were, if you were a company, a, a tax-paying entity, I would say that's exactly what you want to do. Yeah. The problem is when you're not, when you don't have tax liability, what happens is now you're looking at two separate systems. So you have engineering for two separate systems, you have interconnection for two systems and all that. So we lose the, the efficiencies of building one larger system. But and how, it would cost that, you more. Well, how much more? I guess that's, I think the thing that I want to consider is in terms of how much does this cost the town over a period of time? Mm -hmm. Because in terms of the scenario that I think you guys are talking about, actually somebody else owns it for a period of time and then at some point we can have an option to buy it or whatever. Right. And uh, also in terms of looking down the road for 10 years, is it better for us just to buy it outright and just to do it ourselves versus have somebody own it, get the 30% and then we buy it at some point? So now, there's a lot of numbers there. There, so. there are, and, and, it's some, and I actually have a cash flow that I could show you, but the truth is when I'm working with a nonprofit, 99% of the times, like, even if they have the money, I tell them don't do it. Let somebody else take that 30% tax credit because what's going to happen is they're going to take, you're, they're going to install the system, the maintenance, and if there's going to be issues in anything, it's going to be in the beginning, right? An inverter is not going to be right. Whatever the case may be, let that be somebody else's headache. But more importantly, if you look five years later and you could buy this system, I think has a buyout at 60% of value, so a 40% discount. You benefit it slightly. It may, it may, you know, fifteen hundred dollars a year is not a lot of money, but you also didn't put anything out for it. So then you're the, you have a forty percent number that you're buying, and then I would jump right in and buy it as soon as you can. I guess it would be important to see those when you guys figure out what it is. Mm -hmm. so, and I'm in, I'm inclined. I'm just like John. I would rather see it at the transfer station. Um, the only concern I think we have, I think the highway department has expressed this, in terms of not cutting into their sand pile, their oh. particular space. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be important. Uh, so I don't know if you can maneuver it around there. And you said you identified the leach field. What about the septic tank? Is that not in the same area? Is that it's not in the same area. It's, okay. it's over closer to the building, okay. is my understanding. All right. So yes, yeah, so that would be. Um, I know for a fact that that's the least favorite site for the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you want to ask the Conservation Commission about that, you can't, since they are here. Um, but I think um, the other advantage to that site at the transfer station that uh, Don Quigley mentioned was he thought having this, the solar array sort of associated with recycling you know, the, sort of the educational, um, you know, all of that, that that was a positive kind of, you know, we could even do some kind of, the energy committee could even do some inter educational stuff with that there. Um, so that's another reason for doing it. Yeah. 
That, and that is a really good point. Because I'll go back again. You know, when we made the Ed Elliott visit, we saw the array, we saw the composting activity, we saw a lot of things that was all about their environmental efforts, and, and it was pretty neat to see. I'll say that. Um, one of the things, and I don't remember who said it, but you said something about access to three phase. So in terms of the town, those are the only two places we have three phase power? Is there other places? I don't know if it's the only two. For, for the electric, for the co-op, I think it is. Okay, so those are the two. Yeah. So can you explain, John, in terms of what's the technical, why do you need access to three phase power? Is that to feed it back or? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So from from the, the internet, the, the power is developed off the array itself at, at, at a three phase mm -hmm. oh, okay. system. And like when we do it on residential, we have to have the inverter that dumbs it down to single phase. Basically, put a single phase inverter, okay. and it loses efficiency. We want to keep things as high voltage as we can. Yeah. So more right. Can we ask the conservation commission why? Sure. We can, we can ask. Bill, can you respond to why you think that's the was it the worst site that you would pick? <laughs> you cut down a bunch of red oaks over here, aren't they important to you? <laughs> <laughs> it's not his mouth. <laughs> I, I need to state that I'm speaking as an individual, okay. not as the Conservation Commission. We did have a briefing, the Commission did have a briefing by the Energy Committee a couple of weeks ago, but things have developed uh, in terms of a couple of these sites since then. Um, the major problem that we have with the transfer station, and it's, it's not a total showstopper, but having to cut all those trees between the, tr the uh, transfer station property and the sand pile, uh, and still have a reasonable access to the town forest by trail um, is it's less than ideal. Um, the parcel here next to the, to the safety complex, um, it's sure trees would have to be cut. It's close to the road. Um, it's not ideal, but it doesn't impact. Um, the, um, the interests of the commission, as I understand them anyway, as much as the uh, transfer station would. And then uh, it was just very recently that the option of Stevens Field came up. And <coughs> not knowing how heavily that is used for practice and uh, whether not having that available would be a significant loss to uh, the users is not something I can address, but certainly from an environmental standpoint, that's really my strongly preferred location. Okay, Bill, can you speak to the, because Barkshub is also the, not using the field itself, but up on the ridge. Can you speak to that? Um, well, I think she mentioned that there would be a, uh, a reduction in the size of the array and therefore in its production. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't um, staked out on the ground where, where one could put this. I am assuming you're wanting to stay clear of any of the athletic field. It's just. That's another thing she showed us, so. Uh -huh. Is that something that the board would like the Conservation Commission to discuss and then come back to us in terms Absolutely. of their thoughts? Absolutely. Would the Conservation Commission be willing to do that? Certainly. Uh-oh, she's back. I would just, as an employee and a resident, before we, I'm not saying we shouldn't explore Stevens Field, but if we want to build a new town office, we would, make sure we get something concrete as to where that's going to go. Because if we want to revisit Stevens Field and we can't because we put a solar array, that might tie our hands. Right. So I think the board has instructed us to look at a single 
story building, a two story building, and a two story building with a parish house. Right, but I'm just saying, until you get something passed by the voters, you don't want to tie, continue to keep tying your hands. I that's my you. suggestion. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is I think that Stevens Field is still a playing card for a couple of scenarios that are kind of moving around. If it's off, is it off the platter as far as uh, TCBC? TCBC recommended that you don't continue to explore that. Okay. Right, but the voters still have to keep. Yeah, you know. That's just my suggestion. <laughs> Mr. Tapley. Mm. Tom Tampin, 187 Stepping Stones Road. Um, I'm looking at the map of the, uh, of the survey of the conservation easement, um, which goes around the public safety complex, um, and on which there's a 7.9 acre uh, section that was carved out that's not part of the conservation easement. Uh, that has uh, the public safety complex on it, the soccer field, um, and going north of the soccer field, it goes um, past the right of way, and another, you know, the furthest distance looks like it's maybe as much as 300 feet beyond uh, the electric power right of way. There's a very large area there. Um, and let, me the, let me show you the map. I was showing them. Let me see if it's the same thing you're looking at. All this thing back here. Yeah, let me pull that out. This. That's, that's what we, we were looking at. Is that, is that okay, the area so you're talking this, about? So that's this little area here. That's the power line right there. That's the power line. Yeah. This is Stephen So this is the power line. Um, so it goes all the way back here. Yeah. Um, which is all area that was carved out of, not part of the conservation easement. And at the time, uh, that was considered for future expansion of buildings or mm -hmm. other Water. town needs. For, for a well. Um, Is there a well and, on it? Nope, but I'm, that's what Dick Wellington kept it out specifically for possible town water. Okay. I'm, I'm not saying that that's where you should put it. I'm saying it sounds like there is additional area available that maybe it hasn't been considered because it wasn't known um, how far that goes. There's a trail on that. Bill, do you know? Uh, the trail, the trail's below Stevens Field up here. Right, so it's so this here. Here. So, um, the trail goes along. So this is going to be, it goes, looks like it goes along the edge of that. Yep. Is that right? Uh, Maybe we can maybe yeah, 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 sure. do that <laughs> offline. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's all I wanted to point out. And also, there. isn't there some trees out there, Bill, in the section that he's talking about? Some trees, I don't know, birds, American well, chestnuts or something? The, the chestnuts are in the cleared area okay. here behind the... Yeah. Yeah. I thought there was place. something out back that... Well, when you get beyond the uh, transmission line, yeah. then John's right, you're not in easement, mm -hmm. but you are in town forest. Mm -hmm. So, you know, okay. do we want to encroach on the town for us. Okay. I'm not sure we do, okay. but I want to say pointing out that it seems to be legally available. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Okay. Okay, well I think well conservation doesn't meet until next month anyway, so officially. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Good. 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 Well, we'll be we'll be getting um, looking at the logging for what it would cost, and get somebody to look at those sites, and we'll further investigate that site that John mentioned, mm -hmm. okay. and uh, we'll get back to you. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Very much. Karen Rossi, Planning and Zoning Administrator. you on the planning and zoning and building department and the lead banker. There we go. Yeah, already. Uh, yeah. So the building department so far to date, eight million six hundred and thirty thirty-six thousand 36,000 in project costs. This was as of June 10th. 58,425 in permit fees and 418 permits. 
So on this track, we will go over what we did last year so far, um, which is good, right? As far as the planning board goes, there's a lot of miscellaneous stuff going on, but I will highlight on the bigger stuff. Um, the last UNH property has finally sold and is occupied by a mental health um, office specializing in children. Between the lines, or it's called, I believe. Um, site work continues at the Irving Station, the old mobile site. Um, they're advertising for tenants. Not really. They have. They have no tenants yet. They are not. Um, they're advertising for tenants, but they still have a long, probably the rest of the year to go for the site work before they construct the building. So they'd like to get them, but they don't have any yet. Um, the material for that site has come from the vacant site next to Life Storage, which is also going to be another, it's an improved storage building, and they are going to start breaking ground the end of next month once the site work is finished off. They will be starting breaking ground there. Um, Progressive Electric is before the planning board right now to add another additional outbuilding for storage. They're located on the Barrington Lee line up in the woods where the cell tower is. Um, Forest Lund Campground, I don't know if you guys remember, they came here. They're all approved, site walk happened, um, permit, they went through the planning board process. No problems, all done. Building is all shelled, now they're just doing the inside. Um, all the farms are in the process, all the farms are in the process of coming forth to have site plan review. We've been working on the farm stand, the permanent farm stands and the farms um, throughout the winter, all going along. Um, Chestnut Farms has one house left to be sold and they're closing the end of July and that is on Chestnut Way and then that housing development is all built out. Chimber Builders has started theirs. They're on their fifth house out there. First four sold, three lots are already sold. Um, as you know, the Neighbors appealed the planning board's decision for Bedrock Gardens. We've gone to court twice for that. Mm -hmm. The first court hearing was for an interim schedule, which the court did not grant. But what they did instead was they gave us an earlier court date. So we actually went to court last week, last Wednesday for that. And now we're awaiting the judge's decision on that. And then there's still a 30-day appeal period before any work can begin. So once the decision is issued, there's a 30-day appeal period, and then they can start working on the parking lot and addressing the planning board's um, commissions of approval. Zoning board's been very busy. Um, miscellaneous things, nothing really big, just like last month was a farm stand setback variance, which now that farm stand will be coming before the planning board. Nothing too major there, but very busy, but nothing, no new subdivisions, which is great. Um, do you guys have any questions? Sure. Waterline? Waterline, we have not had, it's last I heard it was going to bid in the fall to build in the spring. The fall is when you get the best prices, so they were going to bid it in the fall and construct it in the spring. When that, school is out. That's predicated on what's happening behind the Irving, right? No. No, no not really? No, it has nothing to do with it. Nothing, nothing to do, do with it. They, they thought, we were told by the state that they are going forward with the project even if none of the current property owners want to connect. What the only difference, so the Irving gentleman has to put in fire, so if there's no water line, they have to put in fire fire cisterns. Yep. If the water line comes through in conjunction with their development, they can just tie in for hydrants. So it's a large savings for them. Okay. But it has not, one has nothing to do with the other. I thought he was trying to attract a restaurant, which would need the water line. No, he's not attracting a restaurant now. He, want, he wants any tenant he can get. He doesn't, he has a quick, he, on the planning board approval, it's for a quick service restaurant, which is a Wendy's or, or a McDonald's, those are called quick service. Okay. Um, but he's, no. We get enough of those, thank you. But. That's my opinion. Right. He happily rented to a different restaurant if they approached him. Like when the rumor mill was flying about Cracker Barrel, he was thrilled, but he said nobody's contacting me. How about <laughs> Eric's catering? He could go there. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. PR catering. No, I think it's it's Eric's catering. <laughs> I was told by a reliable source. ER is where you're going to end up if you eat there. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 Thank I you. Wait for the fair. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, uh, these numbers. You, what's that period that that covers? The July first through June, I believe, was June tenth. June tenth this year. Correct. So it's this fiscal year. Correct. 
Yes. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? No. We're good. Thank so you. now with regards to Lee Fair, we've had our second or third meeting, I believe, last week. So last so now we're the, the you know time crunch and planning process. And we have a five oh a registered five oh one C three that is going to run the bingo. So it's gonna be the daily, typical daily activities, then the dinner, and then there's gonna be bingo from the end of dinner to the fireworks, and then the fair committee is gonna sell an ice cream smorgasbord like we did last year. Um, excuse me, as you know, the budget, we, the town gave us $4,000 for the fireworks, and they're 7,500. So last year we had the full 8,000 budgeted, which, so it's in this current fiscal year. So there's $500 left over. So what the fair committee would like to do is use that $500 that was budgeted last year for fireworks towards this year's $3,500 balance. So then we only have to raise 3,000 for fireworks. So is this in FY19? Yes. Yep. Oh, so you want to carry over $500? Yep. Yes. Okay. No, there, the plan is to have a signed contract before June 30th. I see. Which will encumber the five hundred dollars from fiscal nineteen, use all of the four thousand from fiscal twenty and fundraise the balance of three thousand three thousand dollars. And we're very comfortable that we can raise the three thousand. So as soon as you guys I would ask that if you would please give me a motion to for that five hundred and then we can sign the contract and get the for the fireworks and is that included in your request? No, I just threw this on our sheet. I see. That's pretty sneaky. <laughs> um, so that's what the fair committee would like to do, and then we have, um, we're pretty, very confident we can raise the, the three thousand needed for the rest of the fireworks. We're not sure how the rest of the funding for the fair will go this year because a lot of our sponsors have given, a lot of our repeat sponsors have given money to other activities that are being held in town. So I'm in hopes that they'll still donate, but I can't guarantee anything. Do you need our permission to have the bingo gambling thing? I don't believe we do because it's a registered 501c3 and it's considered a county farm fair. Right. That's our read of the statute. Okay. But we'll look at it again. Yes. I know we looked Just at it last year. Okay. So. Anything new planned for the fair? Bingo. That's, that was well, huge, finding somebody to run bingo. But anything else? <laughs> Not as of yet, I don't think so. We're, we're still we're having just, the car show. And yeah, the car show should be bigger. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Regular. We're trying to get other stuff, but it's hard. And then I noticed Barrington Days is the same day this year, and Caleb's, no, I'm sorry, not Barrington Days, Caleb's Country Store is celebrating 150 years of business that day. What are the prizes for bingo? I don't know. The, 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 um, so it's a dog rescue that's doing it, and they're going to, going to take over because we can't, by law, we can't be involved in it. Right. It has to be run by a 501c3. So as I, I when we talk about having kind of a tight budget, I don't think it's you've got to get you know some kind of prizes. That's, for, uh, they're doing all of that. They're doing all that. Yeah, we can't. I don't. It's my understanding from the statute we can't do any of that. So we told them we're not going to micromanage you. You guys are going to. So and they're a good group. So is Eric uh, Eric's catering doing the food again this year? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. <laughs> we were by a friend. Oh, you heard me. I could tell. He's ignoring oh, yeah. you. Yeah, he tells he's ignoring at this point. Anything else for Eric? No. Would you guys mind making a motion for the five hundred dollars, please? Oh, can we do it when we do yours or no? When or? we do mine. Aren't you asking us to encumber funds under 10A? Yes. Yeah, if that's what the board wants to do. Is that? That's fine. Because we're encumbering funds, we'll just keep it together. Yep, that's good. We take our word for it that we'll do it under Absolutely. 10A. Yep. Tell right. administrator. You're on tape. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, item number six, Ruth Eifert, library director. of the March vote, um, the Lee Library trustees are looking for ways to maximize the library space and make it as flexible as possible. Um, we've looked at the four buildings that make up the library. We've got the 1896 Schoolhouse, 1974 edition, which is where my office is, the 1986 edition, which is the children's room, and the 1996 edition, which is the adult stacks. Um, 
those newer buildings, those built in the 21st century, is that right? Um, are in good condition, and they were purpose built for library shelving and library space use. Um, the 1896 schoolhouse, however, was built in 1896 and never intended for library shelving or space needs. We've made it work over the years. Um, what we would like to be able to do is to maximize the flexibility of the use of the interior space. Um, and in order to do that, we need to have a structural report and engineering plans for that building, the condition of that building. I think we've pretty much maxed out the ability of the floors to hold any more weight without doing something underneath. Um, we don't actually have a, a written proposal from MJS Engineering. We had them come and take a look. They were here maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes, just to do a cursory look. Um, they feel that it is possible to put some um, beams down in the basement of that building and make it as sound as possible. Do you really think even at stack load, which is 150 pounds per square foot, I'm not envisioning putting stacks in there, but if we could shore up that flooring um, so that it gives us the most flexibility of that space. Um, his, his ballpark guesstimate for the actual engineering report was about 1500 We asked him for a non-binding guesstimate as to what the actual cost would be if we were going to actually do the structural supports. Um, he said maybe 20 could be 10 could be 30 So, 1000 yes, 1000 to have that work done. Um, what we would like to do is just to go ahead and get the structural engineering report with a plan for how you could shore up the flooring to make it as strong as it can be. Um, and then from that, we'll probably get some estimates as to get the cost and probably do an RFP after that. So that's what we're looking to do. And we're requesting that the trustees can pursue a structural engineering report and uh, to take the cost from the Lee Public Library building capital research. Questions? So just what's what's under the 1896? Is it cross uh, The old vault, the vault that was built there for the town clerk, the big okay. cinder block corner. Oh yes. There's a new furnace down there, um, and storage. Our our little water heater that's this size is in the corner. Is there water issues down there at all? No, that's where the water heater is, and the water issues we thought were issues was really just a leaky heater. Okay, so there's no... We had that fixed. No problem with that whatsoever. <laughs> so I think it's a good plan we should move forward. Yeah, the questions. I don't see we have any options, really. Let's mm -hmm. get more flexibility. Yeah. Do you, do you guys have, have you discussed in terms of your overall plan? Is this like phase one, or what are your... Um, this is our first plan going forward. We, we want to see if we can address some of those issues. I mean, if we got this building so that it was strong enough, to hold things, we might be able to maybe change some of the, the usages around. I mean, one wild idea I had was actually using that old schoolhouse for the children's room. Give them a little bit more room for programming, because right now the programming is all in the other basement. Um, that's a possibility. We might be able to shift some things around within our existing structure. Um, and then if it came down to, we could possibly look at a small addition. We're not going to be hampered by the inability to use that in the schoolhouse. I'm, I'm a little confused. I thought that there was an effort underway to, what's the word I'm looking for? Refurbish or, or do some structural do some renovations. Stru renovations to the, to the building. This, no. is a, this is a piece of it, but I mean, why don't they just, they, why they don't, we just say here's what it's going to take to renovate the building because this would be part of that cost, would it not? It, yes, it could be. But this this would at least in the interim until there was an actual plan for expanding, if there ever came to be one, this would at least allow us the most flexibility so that during a construction phase, you could move things from A to okay. B. Okay. That's true. We haven't addressed the structural issues of that building because we haven't had a need to. Now that we know that we're not going to be able to get any kind of expansion space for a while, okay. this would give us the most flexibility going over the next three to five years, I would say. All right. 
So are the trustees anticipating doing something to ask the voters this upcoming? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, the other thing, just to be clear, you're, you're not requesting money from the Library Capital Reserve Fund, right? You're right. requesting it's from the, the other one. Library Building Capital Reserve Fund. Yeah, because that one you'd have to wait, this one you'd right. have to the, wait until. The, the account that you are the expenders of. Which is the bigger the library one. Building the Lee Capital. Library Building Capital yeah. Reserve Fund. There we go. <laughs> All right. No, I'm good with that. We need a, we need a motion. motion. All right. Uh, I move to approve um, uh, expending, you said up to 1500 It was what a you, verbal amount. Do you want to make it? So I don't know. 2000 just. <coughs> put a little cushion in there since it was. Yeah. Oh, fine. So I not to exceed? I, <laughs> I moved to expend uh, up to $2,000. Yeah, not to exceed. Uh, for doing a uh, structural report for the library, Lee Library, and source of funds to be the library building. Li Lee Library Building Capital Reserve Fund. That's the one. Does that sound okay? I hope John is listening. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Good. That's correct. <laughs> yes. Do I have a second? I, second. Yeah. Very good. Second. Do you have any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Thank you. Item number seven, it's about number five. Right. Hey, you know? no. uh, about 13 years ago, the state gave out grants to place of farm farms for new portable radios. That money has since dried up. They were working on interoperability for police and fire. Um, now they're still giving grants, but that's just to update the radio program itself. So we've had to, over the years, try, um, try and buy new radios. The current ones that we got from that grant, we probably got about 25 of them. Um, we have roughly 18 to 20 right now. They're over 13 years old. Um, four or five years ago, I asked to buy five radios. Um, and we did purchase those, so now they're about five years old. Um, and now we're actually at a point where the the Motorola 2500 radios that we have from 13 years ago are unsupported by Motorola. They don't make them anymore. Um, so they're breaking and we can't fix them. Um, we have a couple of members that don't even have portables at this time um, because we can't fix the ones that we do have. So I was asking the board if we could uh, purchase five Motorola APX 6000 radios. Um, the price is $21,934.40. Uh, every year we go to buy radios. They're getting more and more expensive, but the technology is changing as well. Um, these radios come with a three-year warranty. They're rugged. They're fine. Um, so hopefully they'll last better in our conditions. Um, and they also um, have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities for the future. So this portal that we're looking at, we're looking to get at least 10 years out of it for the future. When the first net comes in, um, the new SCBA, SCBA uh, air packs we just bought, those actually have Bluetooth in them, so we can use these radios, and it's just a key fob that you swipe on the air pack, and the regulator actually has a built-in microphone, so all the outside noise that you usually have to talk outside of your mask with holding your microphone, it's now gonna go through um, the actual regulator and go through the radio so I can hear it better than other people. How many, how many radios do you have? Currently, yeah, we have about 23. So we'll have five upgraded radios, but the other 18 are going to have to be replaced fairly soon? Correct. So the plan that I looked at, we do need radios now. Like I said, we have two people without radios. Um, our radios will bunch, a bunch of the officers and some of the senior members have the 4,000 radios that we got five years ago. So we'll drop those down to the firefighters and EMTs. We'll take the new ones. And then what we'd like to do probably in the future is to release five enough. Is five is all, I mean, I'm just trying to avoid five saying all two weeks from now we have we have X number of radios that go belly up on us, and and again your your short radios for the people. Five is all we can afford right now through the fire department budget. Um, I did talk to them about a lease to own program, um, and I do have that paperwork downstairs. Um, the 
only so and you can do for however many years you want to. Um, we could do a three-year plan or a five-year plan. Maybe it was 10% of the money down up front, and then you go into the lease program. So every year, um, we'd have to pay, and I think what we were working with numbers was about $20,000 a year for three years to get all new radios for the whole apartment. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I won't beat it to death, but communications is a key issue with you. We can't let that Scott, following, okay. on, following on uh, Corey's questions, so you said you, um, what role is not supporting how many of the units now? Um, about 20 of the ones that we have now, like the 2500s, because they're 13 years old, so after a time they just stop making them. Are there third party people out there that are supporting? Do you know? No, because they're not making parts. So they're not doing parts? Yeah, they're not making parts. <laughs> I guess you have a job ahead of you. I have no problem with it. Perfect. Source of funds is your operating budget? Correct. Is this also in the CIP at some point? No. So each, the last time I brought it up to the CIP, it was because each item doesn't, uh, it's, it's not $5,000 or more. So the radios are $2,200 a piece. What's the life expectancy? What's that? What's the life expectancy? 10 years. I would think they should be in. I would love them to be in. Because it, it, it's something that we should be planning, because that's an expense we should be planning for. And it's not like buying a box of papers. We should, yeah. well, we should put them in. I just don't want to yell over my chair, because that's oh, what I tell people not to do. The only question is, what was does the original purpose, assuming you want to use the fire equipment capital reserve fund, did the original purpose of that fund cover radios? Because these are handheld radios? Correct. So they're not in a fire truck. So we'll have to look up the purpose of the fund and the and the revisit the CIP policy. And, and if it fits the purpose of the fund, which I can see out of my peripheral vision that John Tapp is about to look up someplace, um, we can possibly have that in CIP. Well, even if it isn't, even if you can't use that trust fund or capital reserve fund for it, it's still an expense we need to plan for, though. Mm -hmm. So, even if it's wherever we pay for it, it's got to be paid for someplace. We should be planning for that, and that's like a large expense that's down the road at some point. It sounds like it's really close. So, I'd rather for us to be aware of it and plan for it. And we've got a printing process right now in the CIP. So, if it doesn't fit it, maybe we need to tweak it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I can buy more expensive radios to hit that 5000 no, Don't, don't egg them on, please. That's not what I'm asking. Of course, you could always put it in the operational budget. I mean, we, yeah, but you just have to plan for it. We, we, we did this with the police cars, right? Right. And it's in your operational budget, and every year you replace one, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So every year you replace a police no. car. I replace a police car, but we transfer the radios. We move the radios. Right, so he's radios just comparing. Car. Yeah, just comparing it in the sense, so if we put this in the... You know, right. you know, right. every five years in your operational right. budget, right. there's so many, yeah. and we can make it inclusive. We already have a precedence, is what I'm saying. Um, John Tappan speaking as a trustee of the trust funds. Uh, for the fire equipment um, capital reserve fund, the purpose is capital reserve for equipment for the fire department. So it's a piece of equipment that you take to fight a fire, it's fire equipment, it's fire equipment. for the fire department. But this, just to be clear, there's no. Oh, no, that's a terrible question. Just to be clear, there's no money in the CIP for any kind of digital radios in there for. For the anybody, fire department. For anybody. None, none for the police department either, right? Because you guys have. No, his capital. For no, I don't believe for radios. No, I know when he. No. He's, he's saying no. You transfer over. <coughs> they transfer over the equipment from one car to the other. And no, there's nothing in for any other radios. No. No. But I guess, Chief, could I ask you the question? I think you. At some point, you need to replace radios. Yep. And you I've know? just been replacing them, one or two, okay. and just keeping up with it since we got all the ones through the grant. Mm -hmm. So I've been replacing them a couple here, a couple there. When we added the new officer, mm -hmm. I was able to buy one out of my operating budget and okay. kind of keep up with them that way okay. so that we don't. Because I don't have the numbers that he has, right. Right. Uh, so it's easier for me to stay ahead of the curve, mm -hmm. um, so that we're never really out of whack uh, right. for maintenance and things like that. Right. So, could I ask the fire chief and 
Karen, since you're the representative for the CMP, yep. to look at those particular things and then maybe come back to us and let us know what the replacement should be, the replacement plan should be. Well, yes. I'm assuming if there's 20 radios, they're not all the same age, right? I mean, they were purchased at different intervals. So the, some are older than others, or? The ones we're replacing right now are 13 years old, and that was from the grant, so they all came in all at once. But I asked the board five years ago to buy five of them, just like I am tonight, and those are the, the newest ones are five years old. So we have about 20 that are 13 years and five that are five years old. Okay, I'm concerned about the 13 year old ones. So my proposal is every operational budget year, you put in money for five replacements. So yeah. over four years, you've Rotate got, the whole, the whole it's point. gone through. Exactly. It's just a thought. And if we can use the CIP to track that, that would be great. Right, and, and John just said we could use the fire equipment mm -hmm. to buy them as well. Yes, so we'll do yeah. that, mm -hmm. absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Anything else, Chief? Are so we're gonna buy five, or are we just- I don't know, I'm gonna do a motion to see if we go on that. So I move to authorize the fire chief to purchase five Motorola, geez, APX 6000 XE portable radios as proposed by the Motorola Solutions Incorporated with funding from 01.42201.750.00 new equipment budget line. I'm sorry, which one was it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say it's the fire department operating budget and the new equipment line. Do I have a Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. <clears throat> Item number eight, Steve Boyle, <coughs> public works manager. <coughs> from people going 30 miles an hour on. So uh, the bid came back at 19.6, sorry, 19.350. 11,600 of it's just for four end units. The rest of the 400 feet of rail isn't that much money. The end units alone are 2,900 bucks a piece. Um, so what I'm asking is to encumber what we talked about last time, which would utilize $9,577 of operating budget from this year and next year, and then the remaining ninety-seven seventy-three would come out of that highway road capital reserve fund. I think it's the other way around. You have $4,773 left this year. And $5,000. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. It'd be okay. $95.77 out of the Highway Bridges Capital Reserve Fund. But that bid also includes, I can save 1500 12 to 1500 We take the guardrail down ourselves and dispose of the post, which we would obviously do. Mm -hmm. So that would end up being less than that. My, my recommendation would be to grant the money that's on the cover sheet before you in the event they measured wrong or something. And then if you can do some of the work yourselves and save some money, then that's so much the better. All right, so I'm a little confused. Yep. So the 9777 is what you're requesting to be redrawn from the Highway Roads and Bridges Capital Reserve Fund? Is that correct? No, 9,000, yeah, 9,577. And where's the remaining 9773 coming from? 4,773 is from FY19 operating budget. Highway department. Highway. Yeah. And 5,000 is from the fiscal year 20 highway operating budget. So we'll need to carry forward the 4,773. Well, we already have a, or as soon as we sign the contract. I haven't signed the contract. This and we yeah. sign the contract, then we're all set. Okay, gotcha. 
So can I just read this or do I have to put in the rest of this? Stuff? No, you can just read this. Oh, thank God. All right. <laughs> I moved to approve utilizing $9,577 from the Highway Roads and Bridges Capital Reserve Fund to replace the damaged and obsolete guardrail on Garrity Road. Do I have a second? Sir. Any discussion? Um, I, I do just want to mention that I've had a couple of conversations with uh, John Tappan as a trustee of trust, and I believe they met today and took up the request and approved the request. So we should be all set. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any discussion? No, no, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. All right, and then on to the transfer station. I'll give you an update on the food composting program. Mm -hmm. um, I've got 39 households signed up um, in the town hall, which makes 40 buildings involved in the program, which is pretty good. Newmarket is currently has 25 signed up and they're filling a 96 gallon total week. Mm -hmm. So I get more people signing up every day. So mm -hmm. it's looking like it's going pretty good. I, uh, I ordered two 80 gallon totes mm -hmm. in 600 bags last week. They came Friday, people started picking their bags up at the transfer station on Saturday. So hopefully, was well, hopefully, it, on the 29th of uh, June will be the first day people can start dropping off their compostable bags and composting with Mr. Fox. So if we do similar utilization, you said 96 gallons, how, much, how many pounds is that? I don't know. I don't, I'll ask Rick. I didn't ask him. I just asked him how how much he was filling up a week okay. and what he had. So that, that diverts from the MSW, which means we don't have to pay to haul it. And I think there still it. is a fee to haul it. And what I think they explained when they were here like a month and a half ago is you, once you get over a certain weight, you start saving money. Oh, okay. So I'm hopeful we get over that weight. And I think the more people that see it, the better. Um, I got a sign up sheet at the farmer's market. I figured why not? It's outside my building. Might as well put one there and see if I can get people. I was going to say, how are we getting the word out? That's uh, so I got a waste committee getting the word out too. I posted on neighborly. Yeah. Oh, There's an ad on the TV at the transfer station that Denise did. There's a sign up sheet at the transfer station. Um, it was in E Crier, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in the E Crier. I think that's where most of the people mm -hmm. have seen it is E Crier. And more people, I get two or three emails a day with people signing up. So, and how do you have the containers arranged? Do they pull up on the outside? No, so they're on wheels. So, whoever comes to pick them up can take them where they are and wheel them to where they need to go. So, right now, until I can come up with a better place to put them, uh, the door that's right by where you dump your MSW to go outside, they're right outside that yeah. door. That way, yeah. they throw their bag, they just open the door, they go outside and yeah. dump them in the toes. So you've got, how many did you say signed up? 39? 39. 39, 39 citizens plus the town hall, so 40. And how many can you have? What's the 200. Oh, 200. Is I think what the pilot program said, but I don't see why we can't take more than that. Okay. If we start yeah. taking a lot more than that, we might have to buy some more totes. Okay. <laughs> but the more totes we buy in the film, it's... How much are the totes? They're $80 a piece. Um, after I see the totes that I got, I won't buy them from them again. I'll go to the, I can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy them cheaper. Okay. <laughs> These ones say Mr. Fox on them and compostable food. Those are the only difference other than going to the store to buy them. So. Good. And we're going to start on the swap shop parking lot on Wednesday. I have AAA fence coming in to close the gap. Finally, I talked to them today. I signed it. A contract with them today. That was thirty-one hundred dollars. That's coming out of. Are they going to fix the rest of the fence too, or just the section? No, out? just the section to get us back in compliance, so we okay. don't get in trouble if the state shows up. And I'll work. <coughs> I, I figure if I can do one hundred and twenty feet of it a year, I might be able to get all the way around it and okay. go from there. Because the hundred, it's one hundred and sixteen feet is the hole right now. So that was thirty-one hundred. Okay. Um, and having the swap shops an issue, every time I've gone in there since I started in there, there's been things in there that should not be in there. There's been paint cans in there, which is signs that say no. 
Uh, the fluorescent light bulbs that go in the ceiling once, the stick tubes had been in there. I took them out, told them they can't be in there anymore, and went in the next day. They had more back in there. Today I went in and there were two uh, smoke detectors in there which aren't supposed to be in there, and there's bags of stuffed animals on the floor in there which aren't supposed to be in there. Um, the stuffed animals won't get us in trouble, but all the other things I said will get us in trouble if they aren't in there. So. With your blessing, I'd like to close a swap shop for 30 days, go through the whole thing, and try to train them better on what's supposed to be in there and what's not supposed to be in there. And then there's other issues with it that we're going to talk about in there. Okay. Um, that's it for now that I can talk about out here. Mm -hmm. okay, closing it, would that be effective immediately? Or you got a target date? I just I, I just closed it July first or Ju July, June 29th, which would be the first Saturday, and then it'll be closed the whole month of July, open at the end of July. Have no problem. Let's move forward. Mr. Brown. Good morning. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Pope? No. All right. Thank you. Uh, item number nine, Larry Kinberg, the Creation Commission Chair. Yes, sir. You all have copies of two proposals that we received on the lighting for the uh, pavilion. And uh, going over the needs for that, based upon what we were originally looking at, we sort of change course on how we wanted to arrange the electrical for that. Originally we were looking at putting in LED strip lighting and fixtures on either end to act like stage lighting. The problem is that once we put it in we're stuck with it. So we opted for more option uh, for more uh, flexible program by putting in boxes along the length of the um, outer beams, the full length of the 60 feet, and then coming across and putting electrical outlet boxes on the cross members. You would have three switched, three switched electrical circuits in there, which would give us what we want. That way we can go purchase, for a lot less money, at Lowe's or Home Depot, the exact lighting that we want for that time. And then it can just be plugged in, moved, or whatever, or whatever needed to be used within the uh, pavilion. Um, I kind of thought that, that was a better route to go than to put in more permanent lighting that would have less flexibility. So that's what both of these proposals reflect. And um, that's why you don't see anything in there for the actual lighting fixtures, because we're not really sure what we want yet or what's going to be needed but it could be purchased, it could be purchased reasonably. Um, like I say, through Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, so there are two proposals there, one from the Air Electric, and both of them are very similar to each other with the specifications we wanted. Um, the Air Electric is at $2,800, and the uh, CR Smith is at $3,585. And you'll see notes on there. One of the differences on the Smith proposal is that there would be timers on the circuits so that we could set the timers that would be locked up in the electrical shed. And that way we don't have to worry about somebody forgetting to turn off the electric. Um, we have um, donations of wire, circuit breakers, junction boxes, and so on being provided by Jim Banks uh, for that project, which is included in the uh, CR Smith proposal. So those are the two that we've received at this point. So the extra cost with the Smith is only because of the timers? Is, um, that, is that what you're telling me? Yes, I, I don't know exactly why the cost is higher. That's what this proposal came in at. <laughs> there are a couple of more, um, there are 18, um, receptacles in the Smith proposal versus only 14, I believe, in the air proposal. And how many do you need? 
Well, the 18 would be good. That's kind of what, I mean, I met with both parties and we went mm -hmm. over everything. And uh, Jim Banks had some very good recommendations as to how to place those boxes and why we needed the extra ones. And these funds are coming from where? Well, that was the problem. Okay. <laughs> Let's work on that. Uh, no, we had hoped to have uh, funds available within our budget, but then once we got the finalized numbers, we don't have anything left in our budget for that. And um, so that's the stumbling block at this point, putting in lighting, because the Rec Commission doesn't have the funds in there. And of course, the new budget was reduced, so we're looking at issues next year with programming because it was reduced so much. So we're going to hopefully get some more sponsorships um, for the programming for next year. But we're not going to have the funds available as we thought to put into the light. So can I make a couple comments about sure. budgeting? So right now, the REC operating budget has about $1,900 in it, the operating budget. The revolving fund I think has about $5,000 in it. I don't believe that you can use the revolving fund for capital costs. Okay. Because it's intended to be for programs. Mm -hmm. But if we move, and I think it's about $2,300 of the musician costs from the operating budget, take it out of the revolving yeah. fund, then that would free up $2,300 for the, for the electrical project. Yeah, I tried to get a handle on how many of the musicians have been paid so far, and I think that there are some that haven't been paid. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight have been paid. Mm -hmm. Out of how many? No, no, no. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. They, they came from sponsors. The revolving revolving time. Time. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, so there might at this point actually be more than $5,000. As I understand, there's about 6000 in the revolving fund at this point. Um, but again, we were looking to utilize that for next year's programming because we were cut so badly. Julie, mm -hmm. we, do we have money in the contingency fund? Well, I, we have less than $2,000 each in the planning and zoning legal budget and in the general legal budget, and I know that there are more bills coming, and we were going to try to hold the contingency funding for that. The reason I bring it up, I feel this is, I think it's an important issue. It might be tied to the recreational area, mm -hmm. but it's an important issue that we have electricity junction boxes down there for lunch and so forth. Is there any other place we could tap into? Uh, I would have to, I could take a look and see whether the building operating budget mm -hmm. has anything left. I don't know, it's the end of the year. So. Well, the thing is also, you're getting no lights with this. Right. Oh, I understand. <laughs> but there's additional expense going to be coming at some point for the light right. users, right? True. And we don't know how much that is. So. But, I guess I don't want to see the project stalled. I'd like to see it on forward, so I'm trying to find the way. There's a comment back there. Steve? <laughs> um, in my grounds maintenance budget for the rest of this fiscal year, I think I got almost $2,000 in it. And that will go toward, and we spend that money on Little River Park. So well, I guess first we need to know I mean, yeah. which proposal we're going to go with because they're, you know, I don't have enough to pay for all pretty, of have some. pretty different. And yes. we have some left, but again, so are we I'm not quite left? sure exactly what we have, what we're going to have left over in this budget. For this well, you said 11, right, Denise? Yeah. Did I, did I understand correctly, Larry? Is there these, these two proposals, they, they 
they do what you want it to do, or is there more coming down, is there more that has to be done even after this is done? The only thing that has to be done is choosing some um, lighting fixtures, mm -hmm. but like I say, that it's small, that's a small amount of money, then, and we can plug in anything. I mean, a lot of us have the lighting. No, I'm just, so. I'm just trying yeah. to find out whether you have, are going to have a requirement for some more funds in order to get everything done after after we award these proposals. Not with regard to this year. Okay, and having suitable lighting for this year's program. Okay. Okay, next year we have to take a look and see after we get some experience of the lighting that we need this year. Gotcha. Then we can come back and say, okay, these are additional pieces that we'll need to complete what we'd like to have. Okay. But we're kind of, you know, we're not lighting specialists and we're not really sure what what's going to be needed, but this gives us the flexibility to do what we want. Understand. Okay. When you say next year, you mean 2020, or next year as in July 1st, 2019? No, as in year. Okay. Okay. No. Not, not this year's programming. I'm looking, I'm looking at 2020's program. So uh, starting July, this July. No, he's talking calendar year, buddy. No, oh. next next okay, year. So fiscal I mean, once yeah. once we find out this year of running the programs, what yeah. we need for lighting, and there's a number of us that can supply what we need without expense. July of next year. We, we really need 14 or 18 hours. We do for flexibility. Yes. That's why 18 is better than 14. Exactly. Brace yourself. Uh oh. <laughs> yes, Eric, you have a comment? Well, I got a couple of questions and I guess a suggestion. Um, I realize that this is sort of late the game, but the question is, what do you need for light there? I mean, how many how many how many days a year are you gonna need lights in there? Okay, we're we're basically looking at the fall season because of the getting dark earlier. So we need some lighting in there. <coughs> but doesn't the car close at dusk? But the, but the music program goes on to 8.30. <coughs> so how, when is that done? That finishes up in um, September. So that's once a week for how many weeks after? Well, you got four. August, we'll start uh, getting dark at 8 o'clock in August. Mm -hmm. um, gets dark at 7 02 mm -hmm. on the day of the fair. Right. So, my suggestion is that instead of putting in all those receptacles right now, put in a conduit line up to somewhere in the park pavilion on the wall and have three different junction boxes or receptacle boxes on the end that you can extend later on if you have to. But um, if any of you remember from the fair last year, the tent, this is what we use for lights on the tent. Um, one on each side, one down the middle. And these are 25 foot lengths. Uh, you just happen to have those with you? I just happen to have those with you. I just bought these. For a month now. I bought these a little while ago because we had been borrowing the ones that we used for the tent, but those went back to Vermont. And so these are $3.49 for a 25-foot length. Um, and I found a place on eBay where they're $1.99 for a 25-foot length. And so you run extension cords? Where do you where does you could the plug five of these? together. Right, so but are they feet. powered from the outlet that's by the pavilion? Plug them into an outlet. No, I haven't. Yes, Julie. So if you've got yeah, one you, on each Karen. end, if you've got one on one in, on each side of the yeah. pavilion, yeah. on the end, and yeah. one in the middle, yeah. run a string down both sides and a string down the middle. And if that's not enough light, these put out 24 watts of electricity. From the man who has a blue talk for a roof. <laughs> it's gray. Gray talk for a roof. Only because it faded. So. Yeah. So the point is that these are 24 watts, but then these are incandescent. If you use the same LED light, it's a 9 watt uh, LED light. These are $1.98 a piece. The incandescent, 150 feet of incandescent is $37. You mean LEDs? 
Right. I mean, for LEDs. And so even if you put two of these up on each side, so you had nine of these sections to go the 60 foot length, that's, that's uh, $36. There is a big difference, I will say. I don't know if you've experienced this in your own home. A big difference in Christmas lights mm -hmm. between regular old lights but and the LEDs. The question is, what? How much you, light do you need in there? No, no, no. It's not about the light. It's about the draw. Uh, if you're going to go that route, I well, the LED. I mean, if you want to use the yeah. LEDs, if you use, if you use 18 of these, mm -hmm. nine, nine. Save them, Tom, please. I, I don't want them to be in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see these just being torn down. Well, no, if you put them up and staple them, they're not going to get torn down. Oh. Uh, string them along the sides. Oh, she's a good no, I'm not talking about hanging them. No, you got to yeah. be. I just staple them along the wall. Who are you hanging? Up, that's been my answer. You can't control it. You can't reach them if they're stapled. They're, they're going to be in there. Oh, but it be seems be to me that we ought to at least get down there and plug them in and see what they're going to look like. And then go from there instead of spending that kind of money on something that's only going to be used a few times a year. It doesn't make any sense to me. Right. Uh, so, can I ask Mr. Kimber a question? What's the purpose of putting lights down there? Is it just for general illumination? Are you putting two, spot two lights on people? Two, two pole. One is general illumination that they get dark. The other is to put spotlights onto a staging area where mm -hmm. the performers would be. And that would be on both ends because we're not sure which end mm -hmm. we're actually going to, I think, move to. I have a follow-up question. So you would have these receptacles that you can plug in or switch, right? Mm -hmm. You can plug other things into these receptacles. They don't have to be lights, does it? Absolutely. So that gives us more opportunity for flexibility. So if you wanted to plug in a, a, a guitar amplifier so you can play electric guitar. So we're not just talking lights. So I don't want to move the no, fact that we can do a lot more with those no, yeah. receptacles than just lights. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's why I'd like to move but on. But having, uh, having three switch circuits would allow us to control move the light, control the lighting around and I also. And then we can plug in. We don't have to have, we may find that we only need two LED spots to illuminate up into the rafters to provide the light that's necessary. You know, again, sure. we won't know until we actually start doing it. I assume Ms. Rossi wants to speak. Yeah. So, it's, it's speaking for the fair, having lights in the pavilion and having extra receptacles in the pavilion, even if I know it's just one day a year, would be a great help because Jim Banks is lovely and donates his mm -hmm. extension cords and his time, but they're all just trip hazards. Mm -hmm. So if we have some plugs in the ceiling and some lights, it's going to be so much nicer. And so, I mean, mm -hmm. $3,000 for lights just goes a long way if somebody trips and falls and gets hurt. Plus, if we put in the receptacles, this still allows uh, Eric's catering to put up the Eric's string, string of lights, string of well. lights for $1.99. Yes, it drives five hours to get. Five hours to get. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Larry, one other question. Why didn't Ayers bid on 18? The other one, but with the, with the offer well, that so might have been my mistake on that when okay. he and I met mm -hmm. and we talked about the concept of doing it's this. It's three thousand dollars um, for twenty years. You know, Jim Banks says he thinks everything through a lot more so. detail, and that's where they came up with the idea. If you had twenty years, three thousand dollars. Actually, towards the, the Smith because of the timers oh, it's a big break. and the eighteen. Yeah, we were. But it also has to be in condo. Question is, are we going to get the funds? I yes, suggest we take that on frame budget. We are down in terms of health insurance, right? There's tens of thousands. I don't know where we're going to end up landing with that. Oh. Where did you put your Christmas show? What we had left? Well, I didn't realize that we had. We still have three band members or three bands to pay, which is could be as much as a thousand or more dollars. Well, how about if we, like you said, how about if we take that out of the excuse me, we take that out of the revolving? Yeah. And if, do it that way. Right. If you moved, and we can play around with the exact numbers, but if you moved all of the band expenses out of the operating and into the revolving, um, we can only do that for the remainder of the band. Then, oh, just the ones that you have to Because paid? we've already paid. Oh, that doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. No, it doesn't. No. Okay. No, um, no we, can move the, we can move those expenses. So if we did that, I think there would be enough money in the rec operating. I'll leave it up between us. the town administrator and Larry. So 
and we have to say where source of funds are. So where are you going to expend it from? Just the operating budget? We'll just say the rec commission operating budget and the highway operating budget and the town building operating budget. I mean, we'll, just, oh my we'll cobble it together. That's, I like cobbling, that's good. Okay. Right? Creative financing. <clears throat> and I would like to go to Smith Will. Mr. Will Brown. Brown. Thoughts? He suggests that's my Smith Will. Okay. Can you do that? Okay, I move to authorize the town administrator into a contract with C.R. Smith Electric, LLC, at a cost not to exceed $3,585 to install overhead lighting receptacles. receptacles well, really just receptacles. Receptacles. Uh, overhead receptacles in the pavilion at River Park and utilize funds from the Rec Commission Revolving Fund the town highway. No, the rec operating. Operating. Direct operating? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The highway department operating budget? And what's the third one then? Town, the, gen, the buildings. Town operating. buildings. Mm -hmm. Town buildings. Operating budget. Operating budget. Oh my goodness. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All, any discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Larry. When's it going to be done? <laughs> when do you want it done? As soon as possible. Okay. September 7th? <laughs> For the fair, yes. I have number 10. Do you have another time? So, Warren Article 5 from 2018 was the funding for the study and the Preliminary engineering design, preliminary architectural designs for the town center project. Um, I believe that there is a balance of $67,478.36 remaining from the original $250,000. Uh, you may recall that that Warren article um, also had funds for hazardous material mitigation and demolition of the parish house. And right now, we don't know yet what is going to happen with the parish house. So my recommendation is for the board to encumber the remaining funds, which you can do and utilize for another year, to be used to do the demolition of the parish house and the hazardous material mitigation if we need to. Otherwise, if that's if you don't encumber these funds and that's the direction we go in, then we don't have the funds to do it. Or we're again scrambling to find the funds to do it. So we're better off covering those funds just in case. That's my recommendation. And if we don't use them, and if you don't use them, they they're sitting in the unassigned fund balance. Yeah. I have no problem. Mr. Brown, explain. Okay. You have more than that in terms of encumbrances at the end. Oh, Ms. Rossi wanted to secure the five hundred dollars from so the, only those two. for the fireworks. How about if we do two motions? You want to combine them? Two motions. You want to combine them, or just do one, or what? No, just just do the one. Just do the one. Yeah. All right. I move to encumber $67,478.36 from Warren Article 5 of the 2018 uh, for additional fiscal year until June 30th, 2020, and also to encumber $500 from the fireworks authorized in 2019. Right, in the operating budget. In the operating budget. Is there, is there a limit on how long you can encumber the funds? One year. One year? Pardon. Any discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Anything else? Um, just wanted to mention to the board that I'm going to be at the Municipal Managers Conference from Wednesday afternoon to Friday of this week. Okay. Okay. Awesome.
Yeah. Item number 11, I move to accept the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a second? Sorry. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Things to sign. Seal the non public meeting minutes. Do I have a second? second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion passes. 
Uh, item number 14, miscellaneous unfinished business. Anybody have anything? No? No. TCVC meets on Wednesday, 4.30. Um, well, you know, I'm listening to the discussion of what we had before about the possibilities. I'm not enthused about moving with the parish house. I just want to put that on the floor. At this point. I'm just interested. I'm sorry, you're not what? Interested in trying to incorporate the parish house as part of the municipal building. I'm looking for a single building by itself. The parish house can fend for itself. So I just. Well, I'm putting that on the floor. That's not in our charge. Mm -hmm. Our charge has three, so. Yes, I understand. So, okay. All right. I'm just looking at it at well, that point that, that it should be a standalone building, and the parish house is a separate issue. Anything else? No? Motion to adjourn? Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Council passes.